Should the Halo community be blamed as much as the developers for the downfall of the Halo franchise? I've heard this sentiment said many times. I read your guys' comments here on the channel. Don't act like I don't read them because I do. And the thing is that like, I think people feel that like our voice online is so valuable, right? We have direct communication with the developers and we're able to change the game in a way that's actually impactful to fit what the community wants. And we're kind of end up being like the voice of the entire community in a way, because we're the ones that interact. But the thing is that we're actually kind of the minority when it comes to a gaming community, as in like minority, as in like the people who go online, the people who go on Reddit, they go on YouTube, Twitter, and they look up Halo things, right? We have a lot of voice. We have the power to change things within the game for the better for a lot of part of it. But ultimately, we're in the smaller group when you think about the player base as a whole. I'm sure many of you remember this tweet here by 343 saying that the launch of the game back in January 25th, 2022, a few months after release, that said like over 20 million people have played Halo Infinite and people were actually kind of shocked about this. And that's mainly because as a community, we just don't really have the resources to really get a full true scale and understanding of how many people play this game because I'm sure we all remember the infamous Steam chart numbers here, where you see that at the launch of the game, yeah, we had 250,000 people playing at peak launch. And then soon after that, at the end of January, our peak concurrent player count was down to 32,000 if you round up being generous right there. So that's quite the drop off right there. So when we see statements like this, we just kind of have to take them at their word. Though, if you do a little bit of sleuthing, if you want to call it that, you can see if you could use the Wayback Machine at the time of the statement, Halo Infinite was sitting at number five for most played games on Xbox. That's above Roblox and Rainbow Six Siege, even more than Destiny 2 at the time. So the attention was there. People wanted to play Halo, but why was there that significant drop off? Was it because of the community and so much negativity, right? Well, I think partially, yes, there is a certain aspect to it. When you hear constant negative information about a game, you go, okay, well, probably not that great. When really, it's actually probably just getting a little extra hate just because it's such a strong legacy that Halo has. So when the new game doesn't meet up to that expectation of the classic games, people end up rightfully being upset because like, hey, I had this feature back then. How come it's not in there now? And they're rightfully upset because that's their aspect of Halo that they like. That's one of the great things that made Halo so special is that there were so many ways to engage with the game beyond just playing the campaign, beyond just playing multiplayer. But to think that the online community affected the trajectory of the Halo franchise as much as the development of the game themselves, I feel like it's like giving us a little too much credit. I attribute the main reason why there has been a significant drop in player count and interest within the Halo franchise, and that's just because the games just haven't been as good as we've had previously. The thing is that even with Halo, if I would just use that as an example, there was that peak concurrent play count. 20 million people played at the first part of the launch of the game. 250,000 people alone on Steam playing Halo Infinite, but then there was a significant drop off. What happened? Well, people love the gameplay. That's one of the things about Halo Infinite. People always praise about it, that the campaign, pretty good. Even though we saw a hidden experience recently released a video talking about how much was cut from the campaign, how, you know, so much of it had to be redesigned to be able to meet the release date. But also just that like the multiplayer is really fun. People to this day still really love to play it. Uh, the competitive side of things are actually still doing pretty well for a Halo game. But the thing that hurt Halo Infinite the most was the lack of updates, the bugginess, and also the lack of content, right? It's supposed to be a live service game, but when it takes 10 months to release a season, that's not live service. And so with this game being fundamentally designed for a drip feed of content, right? Not everything's going to be there at lunch, but going to get to you at time. We waited and waited, and a lot of times that content just never actually came. And when you have to compete with other live service games like Call of Duty, Fortnite, Apex Legends, and all the other live service games that are out there right now, you can even throw in uh, Helldivers 2 right now at the moment as well, that like, there's just a lot of really good games out there who already have that head start and have the resources and the development time already put into the game, that you have to meet that standard of a game that's been out for five, 10 years or something like that now at this point doing live service. And then you have to basically launch at that standard with all that history that game has with your new game that just came out. It's kind of an unfair comparison, but that's what it is right there. Like, if you, are you gonna sit there and just wait 10 months for the next Halo season? 
Or are you just going to hop over and play Warzone because, hey, the cool new thing just came out that three months ago, a new cool thing came out, right? They're always trying to grab your attention because game companies have realized that your attention is worth just as much as your money right now, even though it might not seem like it. But the thing is, I mean, go free to play. There's actually a very small group of people who actually pay money into the game itself. A lot of people go, hey, it's free and I can play this with my friends. That's good enough for me. I don't need to have all these crazy skins or customization and things like that. That's where you get the whales and also you get like content creators and stuff like that that kind of try to promote the purchase of things. That's why there's content creator codes, right? So then it'll help try to promote people to buy more things into the game. And I'm online, like, yeah, with Infinite, I did pay a few microtransactions, even with Call of Duty. I bought like, I think one or two kind of microtransactions, uh, but nothing too crazy, right? Like I'm not dropping hundreds of dollars because, well, I ain't rolling in that YouTube money with doing Halo videos. So that's just Halo Infinite by itself, but also taking consideration just the Halo franchise in general. I would honestly say that the drop off started with Halo Reach, and that's mainly because they tried to implement a lot of different things from Call of Duty into Halo, right? With customization classes and stuff like that, loadouts, armor abilities, all that stuff. It just wasn't the vibe when it came to Halo, right? But people still loved it. People now, now I think Reach is probably the game that's a perfect example of going through that Halo cycle. If you don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to the Halo cycle, it's this. And I can attest to this because I've played Halo since 2001. So I've been playing all the Halos, been with the community the entire time. And say from 2007, right, when Halo 3 launched, you look back at Halo season, like it was simply perfect game, you know, masterpiece, you know, essential to the franchise and like the previous game that got hated on, you're like, you know what, in retrospect, it was actually pretty good, right? And with the current game saying F this, multiplayer is broken uh, and campaign's awful, rip Halo. And then the new game comes out, right? Reach, F this game, the game's campaign's trash and all that kind of stuff. And then people are looking back at Halo 2, which was very buggy at the time with a lot of different glitches, super bouncing, all this kind of stuff. That was actually a lot of exploits that were in the game. Now I'm looking back as like a perfect piece, masterpiece of a game. Halo 3 that at the time looking like, hey, you know, a lot of things were a lot better, right? Like a lot of people hated on the Halo 3 because like the battle rifle wasn't as snappy, right? As like the Halo 2 battle rifle, a lot of significant changes, button combos being removed and things like that. And then Rage coming out, which completely changed the gameplay of Halo. And people were like, this game's awful. Uh, I'm, I'm leaving for Call of Duty or stuff like that. Halo 4 comes out and yeah. That's the most hated game. Reach looks back, being locked up by upon family. Halo 3 ends up being like the perfect masterpiece of a game. Halo 5 comes out. Halo Reach is now considered like a masterpiece of a game, which I would say like, yeah, a lot of people have that sentiment around Reach. This is like the game I say it's a perfect example that's gone through the Halo cycle of starting out absolutely hated and saying like this is the downfall of Halo to now being pe people consider it like a masterpiece, like essential to the franchise. So when people say that Halo's downfall is because of the community, it's not exactly that, but it's mainly due to the development and also the style of games that get created that just don't connect with players as much. Infinite had that opportunity, right? I think Infinite will always will look, be looked at as that Halo game that should have been, but it never ended up becoming that because it was doing so many things right with the art style, the campaign, the multiplayer, the gameplay itself. People loved it but then it just didn't get the support it needed as a live service game. The lack of progression, stats, community sharing, there was no Forge at launch, no custom game browser like there was in Halo 5, and all these other features that were built up, even in the MCC as well, that didn't come over to Halo Infinite for whatever reason. People just kind of wait around, got bored, and left. And I think that's kind of been the thing with Halo a lot of times with like Halo 4. People just didn't like it because of how much it was like Call of Duty, right? They drastically changed that gameplay without considering how that would affect the overall gameplay, right? And then you had MCC come out, which was a complete flop when it came to the performance of the game. People just got like, super excited at the time, dropped off and left. Then Halo 5 comes out and then drastically changes the gameplay again. Goes a little bit more to the core Halo style, but then also with like, you know, advanced movement and things like that, which made that skill floor way too high for casual players to really feel like they can get into it. And also saw the, like, the comparisons with Call of Duty when it comes like jump packs and advanced movement and things like that. And then having to wait six years for Halo Infinite to then just get no support after launch. It's just like, it's just one hit after another is why we've seen this decline in popularity when it comes to the Halo franchise. But the thing is, there is still that interest. I recently saw this news article from Windows Central saying that Xbox and Microsoft have made billions on Halo, but huge 1.8 chunk of that hasn't come from the games. 
which then you probably think, okay, well, what is it? Why, what causes that extra $2 billion to come in? Well, it says since its inception, Halo has grossed over $6 billion with that number potentially as high as $10 billion, according to details on Microsoft LinkedIn profile. However, in a new article, Xbox head of consumer products, John Friend, good guy by the way, has stated that nearly $2 billion in revenue has come from stuff outside the video games, specifically that $1.8 billion has come from merchandise and multimedia, including toys, collectibles, apparel, novels, comics, pretty much everything outside of the game, right? So that's a significant chunk, meaning that people just want Halo stuff and they'll buy things that are Halo related, but maybe not exactly engaged with the game. And think about how many different games, right? There's Halo reference within them, right? Like Fortnite, you can play as Master Chief, right? In Rainbow Six Siege, you can play as Master Chief, right? There's Halo everywhere, right? But you see people playing off in nostalgia and wanting to play Halo, but then maybe not play it because the games don't resonate with them that much, right? So they're playing whatever the current new game is or whatever new game catches their attention. I still truly feel that Halo has the ability to grab people's attention in the modern day. It's just that they need to make a game or experience that can actually do that. That's why I keep saying Halo Infinite was so close to being there, but it just wasn't ready. So is the community at fault for the downfall of Halo as much as the developers? I would say no, but they definitely do play a part, right? Uh, but I think mainly if you make a product that people want to engage with, people enjoy, I'm saying at large, right? There's definitely a lot of people who love all those Halo games and play with them and say it's their favorite game, but you gotta go with like what the majority of people are saying and playing that, well, you know, the games haven't really been that great. I've even heard rumblings within 343 saying, the developers saying that if it were just any other studio, we would have been shut down years ago. But since we're part of Microsoft or extension of Microsoft and Microsoft wants to make Halo products because of that seven to $10 billion that they've made in the Halo franchise, that there is that interest there that they want to keep making Halo products. If you guys made it this far in the video, make sure to tap like and subscribe. Also leave a green heart in the comments. Let me know who the real ones are if you made it this far in the video. If you enjoyed my content and want to see some more stuff like this, check out these videos right here. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.